Pat Reisinger and Ray Sasser. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. You look you look awful spiffy, except you got the wrong shirt on. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't. I don't feel this is Ray. I don't feel like he's a team member. Do you? No. <laughs> There's the always first, one of well, us. Well, for the first time you are in a while. <laughs> yeah. He went on a trip and comes back and he's all uppity and everything. Yeah. Well, he's got matching shoes and a gray hat and you name it. I mean, I've never seen this uh, well dressed. I mean, it's like he's on his way to church. So you're saying this is the first time I learned how to dress? Well, <laughs> the first time I've seen you without I boots. I try on. to look my best. You listen to your wife for once. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we got a wonderful show again, one of our favorite times of the week. Uh, we are going to be, as Ray mentioned, uh, me and Ray and one of our other team members uh, spent a, uh, the last several days in Nashville in a mastermind. Literally in the backwoods of Tennessee. Yeah, we actually we didn't even have phone service. I mean, it's like, <laughs> why didn't they just beat me up with a bat or something? Yeah, well, y'all did have a banjo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that re reference. <laughs> so it was it was really nice, and it was it was quite a bit of fun. Uh, and like I said, it was it was a mastermind. We got a lot out of it. So we're gonna uh, go over some of the things that we uh, took away from that uh, and and pass it on to you. Hey, I do have one thing I took away from that. They have something there that we don't have in Houston. Hills. Hills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when it takes two breaks to walk out the, uh, up the driveway, you know you're in a hilly country. That was probably, at a, those driveways were probably at a close to a 45 degree angle, weren't they? <laughs> it seemed like it. <laughs> Definitely got, got our exercise uh, and our steps in. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to hand the show over to Pat like I do every week. I do and let him recognize some of our wonderful sponsors. But we before have. we do that, we'd, we're going to talk a little bit about today in, investing and in like how to, how to watch our KPIs, our key performance indicators. And we're going to really talk about what real estate investors need to be doing. And then, but before we do that, we'll jump into um, what some of our sponsors, how they help us and make us successful. Well, thank you, Ray. You're welcome, Pat. <laughs> and James, my name is Pat Reisinger. I am a, a part of this show and uh, this this company. I uh, get the vendors on the uh, on the show to uh, help support this, so that Ray didn't have to pay it all out of his pocket every month. Well, Alamo, not Ray. Alamo. Well, Alamo, Al yeah. Alamo well, Alamo, Ray is Alamo. Well, and Sharon, and Sharon. And about Right. 500 other people. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> when we say Alamo, we're talking about the San Antonio Rio, which if y'all want to know what Houston a... Rio. Yeah, Houston. well, and the Houston Rio. And, and uh, a Rio is, is basically a, a real estate club. Right. And, and what we do is we, we provide this club for investors to come and learn how to be good investors. You know, learn how to, you know, do buy property, learn how to, you know, do the deals, you know, we teach you how to, how to be a good, a good contractor, you know, because if you're going to make money in this business, you need to learn to be the general contractor. One thing, and I know, I know you're just teaming at the bit, uh, to talk about our great sponsors and vendors, but the, I grew up in the rich club and the rich club no longer exists. And what we're trying to do is put what was the core of the rich club back into the Houston community because in Alamo, you know, we have 24 volunteers. It's, it's, it's such a vibrant community. When you go out to that, you enjoy it. It's fun. You feel oh, yeah. like you're part of a family. They just, they just do a good job. And, and most of the meetings, investor meetings are really, they're just networking events. They're not educational. They're not training and they're not about the community. It's about, you know, the owner of it is a, or, is a lender or, or he's, uh, uh, you know, he's got some, he's a coach or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. We want to build the community that the rich club was well, for and all those years. You know, that's exactly <clears throat> what I was thinking about this morning and, and yesterday, you know, when I was, when I was, cause I, every, every day I make a few phone calls to try to get some vendors on board. Right. And that's, that's not easy, but no. what I, it gives me some time to reflect about what we're doing. And, you know, we really are kind of a family, you know, you hear that all the time, but it, you know, I, I worked for a hard money lending company for six years and, and a, one of the largest home investors franchises in the United States at the right. time. Right. And, you know, I started going to the rich club meetings the first month or two I worked there. So for six years, I was really plugged into the rich club. That's where I met Ray one night. Yeah. 
Uh, he showed up in an event that Rich Club had it, that we were kind of took over and were doing called a deal a minute. And, you know, it's it's an amazing thing to be a part of that. I always say, you know, if you're going to hang with, do what we do, you need to hang with the people that do what we do because right. you'll learn from them and they learn from you. And, you know, if you're looking for deals, that's a good way to find them because people are always finding deals and they'll bring them to you right away before they put them online or put them on the internet, you know, for other people to bid on. And not only, not only that, but you get other needs met as well. You know, you might have, you might have a deal and you might be a wholesaler and we have people there that are buyers, right? You might have a deal that you're about to close on, but you need a contractor. Well, guess what? We have contractors too. Well, absolutely. Or you, you might need money. You might need to loan out your money. You know, can you imagine having a million dollars in the bank and earning 1%? That's ten thousand dollars a year. Well, you could be a millionaire hey, and be hungry. You know, back back when I worked <laughs> for the Hardman Lending Company, they loaned money at about fourteen percent interest. Okay, right. And they paid if you like put in a half a million dollars or more, they paid you ten percent interest. So if you had a million dollars, that was earning you a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and I think that the most probably the single most important thing anybody's going to hear come out of any of our mouths today is that you're network is your net worth and if you're around like-minded people who aren't trying to cut each other's throat they actually have the best interest of the community together and that's that's the core of what uh, any successful RIA in this mastermind group we sat in with 10 other RIAs across the country and the number one thing is build that community where people can know and trust and like the people around them and kind of open up and speak frankly and say, hey, I have this problem. How do I overcome it? And there's a fi- there's at least 50 different ways to be stopped in, in our success. And well, that, that mastermind we were at was also a community as well because they're oh, yeah. all over the country. If we run into something that we need help with in another area, another market, we can always pick up the phone to those people that we're at that. And this is Ray again. And James is exactly right. What I was totally impressed with is how people opened up once they got to know and trust each other, they opened up and then I could say like, Hey, I'm having this issue. How do I overcome it? And sometimes it's not, you know, in life, it's not just the fact that, Hey, it's some mechanical thing with the, with the organization is it could be something internal to you, you know, in a mastermind session like that, a lot of times you may not like what they tell you or the <laughs> feedback. They, in fact, the guy that went before us, I mean, they just like just beat him up. And of course, they weren't too nice to me either. But that's the that's the value of having people around you that you know and trust. They're going to speak candidly. They're going to tell you, "Hey, you think your problem is is B, and it's really D." And here's what you got to do to fix D. Yeah. Well, you know, this week I had to, while y'all were going, I had a coaching call, you know, and uh, I think we had five or six people on that coaching call, which is, which was good. Right. And, uh, and you know, we had uh, Matt from San Antonio and then we had Milton and right, uh, Emma right. and Lloyd and, and two or three other people. And, and so I, I had to keep kind of pulling it out of them. Well, what, what else do y'all want to know? And, and I go, well, I think that's about it. And I go, well, I've only been talking like an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. And they said, yeah, well, Ray would go on for another 30 or 40. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'd all be going, hey, come on, we need to go to bed. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to make a long story bearable, I am Pat Rice Singer. I'm also a vendor. My name of my company is uh, Residential Rehab Consulting. Uh, I'm on our website, which is uh, MassivePassiveShow.com. So you can go to MassivePassiveShow.com, and you can get our events. You can get our vendors. And and believe me, these vendors uh, are my vendors, too, and Ray's vendors and, and James's vendors. They're, they're, we vetted these vendors. Most of them have been with us for many years, or with me at least for many years. That's why I got them on the radio to kind of get this thing going for us. And, um, and I'd like to talk about them for a few minutes. So kind of tell you what I do is I, I help you on your projects. I manage your projects. Also, these vendors are my vendors, and I'll bring them in, and they'll give you prices how, how to do your rehab. And what makes this so good is that we don't have to babysit them. I mean, that is the most important thing when you're doing a rehab is not to have to babysit your vendors. In other words, to have vendors that can go to work 
you, they bid on the job. They have spec it all out. We give them a we give them a scope of work which they bid on, and that's what I do with you is I set that up, and <clears throat> that way everybody's looking at the same paperwork if you don't do that that means every vendor you come in you're giving them a different set of rules to do and then you wonder why your bids are so spread out right and there's so much variance between them because you haven't done your homework and that's what i teach to do is do your homework and uh so i'd on, on that i'd like to talk about some guys that are doing a rehab that i'm working on right now it's a fire job uh my client uh called me he met me a couple of years ago and and uh, uh got with him and i said okay this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring in some vendors they'll give you prices you'll pay me a flat fee and i'll be basically your project manager and uh if you want to make some altercations or changes you pay them direct so i don't mark it up i mean that's the beauty of what i do because a general contractor when you come to him he not only asks them how much is the other vendor how much it's going to be then he marks it up 15 or 20 percent and so you end up paying, you know, if it's a, if you have $5,000 worth of extras before it's over with, well, you know, it, it, what's going to happen is you're only getting about $3,000 worth of extra because a general contractor is going to make another two grand because he has to manage those people. So anyway, at that, I like to talk about Raymond Medina with RJM Roofing. Raymond does all my framing, roofing. And uh, any Hardy that I do, he's got great carpenters that worked for him for years. Raymond, uh, if you're if you're in a windstorm area, you want Raymond to do your roofs. You can find him on MassivePassiveShow.com. Um, well, Matt, and if if you don't know if you're in a windstorm area, you better find out because you have to have well, that. You, you have to know that. Well, and it has to meet the code on right. the shingles, you know, the nail pattern and the rake and all those things that you don't know about yet. We but, made a horrible mistake of getting a roofer to do a job for us. He didn't tell us that it was in a windstorm area. We didn't know to ask. And for 15 years, we wanted to get windstorm on that house, and we never could do right. that or redo completely redo the roof. Well, and that's the thing. These inspectors, man, they can go up and lift up two or three shingles and tell if that roof is done right. right. By right. just looking at a couple of shingles. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, Matt Stocker, which is my master electrician. He's rebuilding the service. Matter of fact, we had to, uh, it, the service is one of those underground where it comes in, uh, you know, from a box. Will he go to Beaumont? Does he? Will he go? To yeah, Beaumont? he said he'll go to Beaumont. But the thing about it is, he has to, uh, he'll have to, you have to give him notice so that he can register there. Because, okay, got, you yeah, know, all, all yeah. these masters have to be registered in that particular in area. Whatever town they're working in. That's they're right, exactly. In other words, guys that are in Houston, you know, they, if they work in, San, in, uh, in Galveston, they need to register right. down there, okay? And they, and they can send their insurance. A lot of times they're already registered, but if not. Well, you know, they have to all they have to have an insurance binder, and they have to send that information down right, so they right, know they're, they're right. an insured master. And Because if your insurance is out, then you can't do jobs here. Okay? Right. Uh, then there's also um, James Zentech is signing up this week. He's been my HVAC contractor for 14, 15 years. He is great. And um, we had another contractor, but he, he dropped out. And I called James. He said, yeah, we definitely want him. Can, can I kind of sidetrack you for a minute? But yeah. it's really important. Um, when I first started, it, uh, I had an AC guy go out and look at a job, and he basically lied. And I didn't realize it until later, but he said, oh, you got to short it out coil in the compressor and you got to replace a condenser. And it turned out it was a capacitor, but I had like an $800 bid to take care of that job. And the, the reality is that there's a lot of good guys out there, really good guys. I, in fact, I went on to get my state license because we were just buying so much equipment. And I, and I was like shocked that, that they would lie to us. And, and that's the thing I think that is getting jobs done on time, getting them done on budget is the difference between success and failure in this business. And that's as Pat and I, who've probably done a couple thousand rehabs between us, you may not realize how important and valuable these vendors and people are that we're vetting, but there's everything. And, and the power that, that we bring to the table is we're recommending them to all our guys. And if somebody were to call me back and say, Hey, they played that game on that AC, I would come on down on them. Like you can. not Oh yeah. Well, and it's, and you know, to give you a good example is the, the, and the guy that we had was a really nice guy. Right. But one time, you know, the, the company I was, I was their 
construction manager, they right. they said, oh, no, James is too high. We, let's use this other guy. Well, right. the other guy went over there and said, oh, no, you got to change out your whole system. It's bad. Yeah. Well, James went over there and said, no, it's not. It's a circuit board. It's a $600 right. deal. The, the, the board's like $300-something, and I have to charge you the labor to pull, the, pull it out because we're working in the attic and stick all that back in and do all the, the connections. Well, and we did that, and the air conditioner was perfectly good. So and, and it AC, went from a, a $4,000 deal right. to 600 bucks. And and AC is an example. It's obvious, easy example of how complicated this business can be. But even little basic things like painting, there's not a single thing that's done in rehabbing that's simple anymore. It's everything is high tech. Everything's complicated. You get the wrong guy, you're in trouble. It's just a, it's a big problem. And and we we kind of lean on these guys. And another mistake is. I learned, learned or seen with beginning investors is, is they think of contractors as the enemy and it's because they're not helping the contractors. They're not nurturing them. They're not looking at them like they're partners with them. They're not building that relationship. And these relationships, some of my guys and Pat's the same way, I, they've been doing the same job for me for 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. And it's so wonderful to pick up the phone and say, it's over there. The house is over there. A week later, I get an invoice. I haven't inspected their work because I have that trust and confidence in them. And I'm not saying do this with people you don't know, but when you build that relationship, it's so nice to be able to say, okay, thank you. I don't have to worry about the garage doors. I don't have to worry about the air conditioning. I don't have to worry about the guy lying to me and charging me $4,000 for the $600 item. Exactly. Well, anyway, real quick, because we need to move on. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. And, and, no, that's fine. That's fine. We'll go down a few more rabbit holes. For this <laughs> What's such a critical I mean, part of what we that's do? That's why we need to expand this show to an hour and a half <laughs> so we can have 45 minutes of rabbit holes and 45 minutes of, of, of talking about good stuff. But anyway, uh, real quick, we have um, uh, Lauren Miller over there at Fantastic Floors. Great guy. Matter of fact, I'm on my chicken list for getting vendors. I was looking on a, on a, that chicken list you gave me with 900 vendors on it. Yeah. And he's on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, from years ago. And so he's synonymous with uh, with this business. He knows the the investor market and that's what he gives you prices on you know a, a retail guy will come in and, and the price will be a lot higher than our guys because our guys know the value of working with with investors because they stay busy all the time working with investors yeah what like what lauren does is lauren brings two major things to the table one uh, really three but one is he knows he knows this business Oh yeah, we're getting to you. Yeah, he Lauren knows this business, and what Lauren does is uh, he brings people on board to do the jobs. He bids the jobs, and he really doesn't even bid them. He just says, "This is the price." We sign the proposal, and next thing we know, it's installed. What people like P Lauren, the power to, of Lauren is when you have that technical problem, you pick up the phone and you say, "Lauren." I'm having this problem. What's the best way to do it? And I used to kind of debate with him, and I give up the debate because he knows so much more about flooring than I do. I just, whatever he says, we do it. Well, I, I got to tell you, man, there's there's the most important vendor we have besides me is Hal Gailey. And Hal is our engineer for our radio station and does all kinds of other stuff. Well, Hal's actually a lot more important than you are, uh, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you were going to say that, but I had to get that in because I need money too. <laughs> Hal is great, man. Hal takes care of our website. Matter of fact, James was with him and, and one day James was talking. He said, you know, he was fixing a problem while we were on the phone. Yeah, he's he's definitely a lifesaver. We you know, we we do throw quite a bit at him, and he, you know, doesn't flinch. You know, he gets it taken care of, and that's what. Well, what Hal we Hal is also. If you go to massivepassiveshow dot com, you can get Hal Gailey's information. You've got to have Hal in your in your wallet. You got to have him in your phone because he will save your bacon uh, on a regular basis. For instance, we have a problem like getting on email for, for Yahoo or, or there's something going on Yahoo. He already knows about it and he knows how to fix it. And by the way, he's with Bayou city tech, Bayou city yeah, tech. Man. Exactly. I was fixing to get to that, but he's a great guy. He's been working for me often. Well, actually pretty, 
pretty gone for about 16 years or so. And uh, uh, I referred him to a million people. I remember when we first first came on board here, and I kept saying, you know, call Hal, call Hal. And nobody wanted to call Hal. And I said, call Hal. And like a week later, everybody's going, Hal, it's great. <laughs> I said, well, you finally made that phone call, you know. I always say it's that 500-pound phone, you know. So basically, if it's computer-related, he, he can solve the problem. Uh, it, absolutely. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, you, you even work on computers too, right, to some extent? Yeah, yeah. Can people hear you talk? Uh, well, he said yeah. yes twice. Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Make sure I know you got a mic. Hey, we act, this is actually a real estate show, though, so you know we have to talk about real estate. Yeah, well, that's that's right. And real quick, let's talk to one guy and get it over with, and okay. we can talk about real estate the next thirty minutes. And uh, this is Marcus, and this is actually Delago. tied in. And uh, Marcus is is uh, actually one of our vendors now. I put him on the vendor page. And uh, and he's got a, a taqueria up here off of 1960. A taqueria. A taqueria. Is that what you call it? That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. You know, hey, you know, people make mistakes with names all the time. You, you, but people know what you're talking about, right? Absolutely. Hey, this is Marcus Delgado with Los Hermanos Taquerias. And we're over here on the Tascacita 5006. The Tascacita, as a matter of fact. Pat, thank you for having me on. James, it's a pleasure. Hal, Hefe Grande. Hefe Grande, that's yeah. right. Better watch it. He'll call us Donkey One and Donkey Two again. Yeah, well, he, he, is, donkey, <laughs> he is Donkey Kong One, and we're Donkey Kong Two. Well, guys, it's a pleasure to be on here with y'all guys. It's an honor to be with y'all guys. Thank you so much. I just wanted to let y'all know we have, we've, we've provided a, some tacos for y'all guys for a couple of events. Uh, we just started up. We just opened up about uh, 11 months ago. And we're here in the Tascacita, and we uh, opened up during the COVID se season, or pandemic, actually, is, and it's uh, been really tough. But uh, y'all guys have been real helpful with some of your events. Uh, we're classic taqueria. No, we, you have been helpful for our events by providing <laughs> those tacos. And a lot of times we'll, we'll call those order ins, uh, on a, orders in on a late Friday afternoon, you know, around like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and then we, you know, pick them up the next morning. Yeah. So we definitely... Uh, and they're a hit at the events too. Trust me. Yeah, awesome. they really are. Well, uh, Nikki, Nikki's his sister, and Nikki is uh, associate with us. And she's one of our volunteers. And uh, I told Nikki, I said, "Well, we'll get um, Marcus to send me his information because you know he's a small businessman, and, and you know." Even though I got vendors that are paying vendor, he's really kind of a paying vendor. I mean, you know, he takes care of us, and uh, we want to help him because his food's really great. And uh, the restaurant business is tough. Everybody knows it, you know. So uh, we're glad to have you on here, Marcus. And I hope that people are listening and they, they uh, real soon go to our website and get your information too. And uh, you can cater parties too, right? If they order like 200 tacos, you'll deliver them and all that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All they got to do is they can reach me at 832-788-7051. Or they can call the uh, taqueria itself. It's 281-973-4548. Okay, say that slower. 281-973-4548. Um, actually, the best thing they could do is go to our Facebook, which is Los Hermanos Taquerias at and, 5006. Well, and, and that, again, that, will be, that will be on our website, too, if you sent that information to us, because how we'll put that on there. You'll have it here in just a few minutes. Okay, yeah. great. And, and our website is MassivePassiveShow.com. Pretty easy. Uh, MassivePassiveShow.com. You can find all of our information, uh, our vendors and sponsors, uh, you know, our events, our upcoming events that we're actually going to be talking about a couple of them uh, here in a few more minutes. And then... Uh, and you have indoor dining too? Yes, sir. We do have indoor dining. Uh, if you go to 5006, we're in Suite A. Uh, it's a Valero gas station that has a couple of buildings, empty leases next mm -hmm. to it. Uh, we So you're all on the first end. floor there, though, right? Correct. And do you have a, pa a little patio where people sit outside? We ha we are A couple of chairs? We we're still new. We're still working on uh, doing some outdoor seating. Uh, in fact, because of the pandemic, it kind of uh, put a strain on our budget. But we're still doing some updates, including our uh, our menus. Well, that's great, and I and I really and dear hope that y'all succeed in this, and we're going to help you with everything because your your food is really good. Pat, yes, thank it you is. Very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for, for being, being on, and be sure and, and come and join us at our next networking event coming up november 13th 
uh, and it's going to be at 1001 West, West Loop South uh, in Houston, 77027, right across from the Galleria. In what room number? Uh, it's going to be Suite 550. And what you're going to actually do is park on the seventh floor of the garage, and we're going to have signs that are going to take you right to our room and show up at 8.30 because we will have some of these wonderful breakfast tacos. We'll have some coffee and donuts and things like that. Uh, And it'll be an hour of networking before we start. Uh, So, again, all this information that we're talking about is on MassivePassiveShow.com. And you can sign up. You can register there uh, or get the address and just show up. And we'll see you on that Saturday morning yeah. and have a taco November with you. 13th. Yeah. And then <laughs> turn into our show and tell everybody about what a great show we have. So, yeah, it's actually, it's one of our, I would say that our live stream and our, that we do every Wednesday in our Facebook groups, uh, and then the radio show, uh, they're just a lot of fun. Well, and, and the cool thing is that, you know, YouTube, you can watch that anywhere in the world, right? Yes. And then if you're, if you're not able to, to catch that, you can always get to hear the show live while we're on the year by using the iHeart app. Yeah, iHeartRadio app. Mm-hmm. You can listen on the radio station's website. They have a listen live button. So there's there's a number of different ways that you can you can uh, you know tune in to us and, and hear from us. Uh, so <clears throat> again, we're Ray's getting back into uh, getting settled back in here. So we're gonna. Yeah, I saw y'all back. guys signal them that say, no, don't get up. Ray's going to come back. Don't get up. <laughs> oh, I, I thought, you know, I was wondering where you were, and I looked over, and there you were on the couch, you know, and I thought you were, I thought you were taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into, we're going to talk a little bit more about the mastermind that we were at this week, uh, and we do have some more things to bring to you. Uh, so I'm going to let Ray talk about that. You know, my biggest takeaway, and I, and not, it, I love these things, even though it's really directed at how to run the, a great RIA. It's really like how to just live your life. These are life lessons I learned. And my biggest takeaway of all, the, you know, it was three and a half days of just nonstop, you know, uh, uh, drinking from a fire hose. But my biggest thing was connections. And whether it's um, whether it's uh, going out and having fun with your friends, or it's doing business, it's going to the RIA meetings, it's um, you're going to be a lot more successful in life if you make solid, strong connections. In fact, I believe that so much. It's not really as many. It's not the the quantity as it is the quality of those connections. I. I, I connected with a few guys there that are pretty impressive and, and ladies uh, in what they've accomplished and what they can do. But I, I now with those people can pick up a phone and say, hey, in fact, one guy, uh, he's been property managing about half as long as I have, but I learned a really valuable tip. And so I'm going to pick up the phone or remind him in case he forgets <coughs> and say, hey, I need that thing that you have. It's basically a, a, a booklet that he attaches with his lease and it has a very detailed breakdown of how they how the lease is supposed to go what their expectations are from each other and he's already got it written and it's something we never did in our leases and the hundreds of leases we've done we tend to put the language in the lease but in this case he's got that book that goes with it it's an attach it's an, basically an addendum to the lease and and so we'll be getting that and it's connections are everything so if you come to these RIA meetings you want to reach out you want to communicate with you just don't know where the power is at the table until you talk to people and see what they bring to the table and it's it's surprising what people can do uh and it's a synergy you can build when you're around like-minded people yeah we and we're we are Alamo Maria of San Antonio and Alamo Maria of Houston mm-hmm. but if you're say you're listening and you're living in Florida or you're living in another state somewhere mm-hmm. you know these types of groups that are tied with the national RIA, it is a it is very important to get connected with them. I'll tell you, we're doing a rehab right now in Mahia, Texas. We're doing a rehab in Silsby, Texas. We're doing a rehab in Houston. We're doing one in Orange, and right now we've got one going on in Canyon Lake. Those are active rehabs. We're going. I'm at the mercy of those guys that are there on the job, getting that job done. 
And the way that you build these connections is you try to help those people out. You try to make it work for them. If they go over budget, I don't, I don't worry about it as long as it, we're close and there's good reasons for it. I don't get upset. I don't get mad because I know that this, the guy in Mahaya, he's now my bird dog. He's now that guy that's going to find five more houses because I'm going to keep him and his crews busy. And I'm going to build and develop that relationship with them. So these, this connection thing is very, very valuable to all of us. No, absolutely. Well, that's what life is all about. I mean, when you get down to it, people that are uh, uh, lone strangers, you know, right? They, they they may do fine and all, but everybody else that are, is a networker will kind of steer away from them because yeah. it's always about them, right? And what we want to do is be connected with people that it's not just about them; it's about it's, us, it, and we're about them too. We talked a lot about that about givers and takers, and and. I've been doing this business for 38 years and I've been making friends nationwide and going to events across the nation. And the guys that I see that come back year after year that you hang out with and they're sharing their successes, generally successes, uh, they're all givers. 100% are givers. And if you go into a room and the first thing out of your mouth is what can these people do for me? You probably won't be there next year. No, and you know, now. good example. You know, Matt's up in New Braunfels, right? Right. And 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 Matt hadn't paid me a dime, and I've been working with him all week trying to go through a litany of investors that can help him out on on a deal that he needs someone to kind of get into it with him with money. And uh, we're going through this list list of people who are going, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then I say, well, here, try this person, you know. Right. And eventually, we're going to hit on that. And he's going to be successful. You know, what I get out of that is that, first of all, I get to help Matt. And then somewhere down the line, Matt's going to come back and help me. Well, you I don't know if you know, but Matt goes around the country fighting fires. Yeah. And so he's putting his, li his life on the line. His family depends on him as a, as a breadwinner. And he's... He's all in and just listen to him and some of the things he's done. I mean, there's no question that Matt is a giver of the highest order. And, and when you're around those people, um, in, in fact, I would say literally 100% of the successful people I know that stay successful are givers. They're mm -hmm. givers first and then they're takers. Right. And Matt could ask me to do anything for him in the world. If it was in my power, I'd do it. Right. Because of the kind of person he is. Well, and, and you know, I knew that when I first met him and Dusty, they came to right. our construction workshop, you know. Right. And, uh, but I had met him in San Antonio when I went up there with the San Antonio Rio. But, you know, he'll, they'll travel down here because they yeah. really know the value of, of, us were in this yeah. business for 40 or 50 years doing the remodeling and buying and selling houses. And, and, you know, now that's 50 years for Pat. I'm at, oh. I'm at 38. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do got a few years on the right. Actually, you're at, you're at 39, <clears throat> 39. Yeah, but I, I've, I've done, counting. I've done build outs and, and high rise buildings and, and, you know, had to work with the Rayco systems and all kinds right. of stuff that you don't see in residential, but I can tell you that at the end of the day, it's all kind of about the same. It's just different products that you use. Yeah, and <clears throat> just to reiterate on the connections part, you know, one of the things that I took away, you know, is is a tip, you know, that, you know, because there's basically two types of people out there that, you know, introverts and extroverts. And in certain cases, I feel that I'm an introvert. In other cases, I'm an extrovert. And, you know, so one of the things that, you know, can be an icebreaker is just walk up to somebody and, you know, you just ask them what is a missing piece in their business, you know, because everybody has something that they're missing and everybody can bring something to somebody. Yeah. So we actually talked a lot about that. And I think the the bigger message is that you have to know who you're talking to. You have to know where they're coming from. An introvert, if you talk to an introvert, they're going to tend to make you think they don't like you. They don't mean that. It's just they don't communicate the way an extrovert communicates. And so you have to you try, have to understand people. And, and it, like when we talk, uh, do a negotiation class or something, that's the first one of the first things we talk about is like, who is that person? What makes that person? Is that somebody that's an analyst? Is it an amiable? Is it somebody that's a caregiver? You have to kind of know what kind of personality they have and how to uh, deal with that person. 
And I love what you said, James, because basically what you're saying is you when you're networking and learning how to network, which really hard for me as an introvert, um, when you're networking with people, you need these little throw down lines, you know, like Marvin Zindler, who had a, they always said he had a, a throw down roach, right? So, <laughs> so I you, do have one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you need these throw down lines, you know, and that it, coming up with three or four of these kinds of questions, just to kind of open the dialogue. And once you get that dialogue going, then that's when it, the floodgates basically open. Yeah, Ray's a real introvert, except when you see him at a bar. <laughs> he always <laughs> <laughs> hollers the loudest for his drink. <laughs> okay, yeah, now you're telling the whole world I'm a drunk. <laughs> Thank you. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a space cadet. <laughs> okay. where's, the, where's the mute button on Pat, Pat's mic? Hal <laughs> knows where it is. Yeah. Hit the mute button now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I'll take well, you. Can we, can we be real time and just put Pat had on a delay <laughs> well you know we have, we have a lot of fun you know it's no the criticism is not criticism here we're just joking with each other and uh because we like to keep our show a little lighthearted, you know because you can listen to some of these shows and go on and on and on and you just really kind of like you know when is he going to get to the point right, right and uh and when we we kind of switch horses in the middle of the stream here because we there's so much to talk about yeah on this show yeah. in real estate i mean ray's got some acronyms and about things he's got one that he's he's going to copyright Ray. What is that one? Well, I, I can't tell him until I copyright well, it. Well, yeah, Jesus. he'll get it copyrighted. You, we're all where's witnesses. that delay? <laughs> we're all witnesses to the fact. Well, you say it all the time. I mean, you might as well say it right now. Well, I think James and I kind of came up together, uh, came up with it together. <laughs> and it's um, when it comes to real estate investing. Now, I think James likes calm. I like be calm. Yeah, but and you got to say the Don't the say letters. the one you said today, James, because that's the one I really, really want. Okay, so can't can't put that over the radio waves. But gener it's generally calm. The, the acronym, Which is K-A-L-M, right? K-A-L-M. What does that stand for, James? Knowledge, attitude, leads, and money. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things, like I know with our coaching students, that's one of the things we we have to beat in their heads. And, and when we say money... That's that's a book. What what money means to an investor, you can write a book on. What leads me to an investor, you can. And I don't mean a skinny little bitty book. I mean, leads is its own science. Getting money for your deals and managing and controlling the money for your own deals, that, that's a real science. I mean, it's not anything. And and I always hated talking about attitude, but what I've seen time after time with successful people and i see it really with students more because we drill more into into what makes success but what i see with successful people number one thing is attitude if you've got attitude it's going to drive you to the knowledge it's going to drive you to the leads it's going to drive you to the money but that attitude is almost like hey i don't know how this car works but i'm going to sit behind the steering wheel and i'm going to push that black pedal down and see if i can keep well, moving on the road you know just give you an example i started far out and uh, right on and look i didn't make a dime <laughs> off of it and everybody says right on <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> well, I've said it so many years. I, I, in my mind, I think I'm the one that started it. <laughs> you're, you're the Forrest Gump of... Uh, yeah. Of, well, uh, you know, I'm a legend in my own mind, you know? <laughs> tell yourself with that enough, you believe it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You, you know, well, that's what I always say. You know, you tell that lie too many times, it becomes a reality to you, you know? So you got to be careful. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is... Um, is about the attitude part and i've always it's always been the hardest for me to talk about that as an introvert it would be you know an extrovert's going to tell you why you're wrong and and why you should do things differently but as an introvert uh it's always been hard for me to confront that with myself and and so that attitude and and one of the things that i think we have to think about is it's october in fact yesterday was the worst day of the year uh for people like me we had it was the final final deadline to file your taxes so if you owed money to the irs you had to write you had to write that check yesterday um but uh, uh what's coming up on january 1st is uh historically everybody writes down what their goals are 
And honestly, in fact, Charles Nguyen, a great friend of mine, said, you know what, if you wait till January 1st to write down your goals and, and decide what you're going to do this coming year, it's too late. Uh, it's too late. And, and he says, go out 30 to 60 days. And that's right now, it's 45 days. And we're 45 days out to January 1. And the question is, wh who are you going to be? Where are you going to be? How do you measure where you're at? How do you, how do you plan on where you need to go uh, if you don't have KPIs? And, and a KPI is, stands for Key Performance Indicator. And for example, one of the things that's important to me as I get older, uh, I, a lot of my friends are no longer with me. You know, they, they were, they had bad habits early on and they, and they drop off, they disappear at 30, they disappear at 40 or 50. And these bad habits, if you've got a lifetime of bad habits, they usually take you out in your fifties and a lot, and Pat's sitting here with me. He knows too. A lot of these guys that we loved, I mean, we grew up with, they were the life of the party and they're no longer here. And so nothing in real estate if if we do real estate to have fun and to and grow our legacy and and build our wealth wealth doesn't matter if you don't have health yeah i tell so, people all the time you better not say anything bad about me because i've outlived all my <laughs> a lot of people already <laughs> and you're liable to croak and i'll still be around <laughs> <laughs> right and you know pat the uh history's made by the survivors <laughs> so oh, you, that's get, right. you get to write their history right. well the so our, one of our KPIs need, or a, a section of our KPIs need to be related to what are we doing health wise. For example, one of the best, one of the best KPIs out there is our BMI. What is your BMI? And don't tell me, well, I'm thick boned and all that crap. No, you're not. You know, you're, you're not the 0.1% or the one out of a thousand person. You're being, look at the, your BMI chart and see if you're in range. If you're not, that probably should be your KPI. You know, are you, and they use nasty words on these uh, BMI charts like morbidly obese. I mean, I don't, you know, what a nasty word. But, I mean, it doesn't even, in, in, in the environment we live now, it takes a lot of effort not to be obese. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary battle. It's a battle worth fighting. But if we want our help, then we've got we to gotta look at these KPIs. What are we doing? Moving. We now know that people who are sedentary their risk factors are just as high as if they are smokers. They've actually proven that. So sedentary lifestyle is just as fatal as, as being a smoker. In fact, smokers in office buildings outlive non-smokers who don't go down and take a break four or five times a day because they don't move around. Mm -hmm. So we've got to figure out what are our KPIs going to be for our health. And, and some of those two, the two categories obviously are going to be how much are you moving, because you you move to survive, and and what your body weight is. Well, my brother-in-law had some plaque break loose in his arteries, and uh, he had a he had an eye stroke, an uh, eye stroke, an eye stroke. And and when I looked that up, it it goes your left eye for some reason is kind of like you know getting a deep vein thrombosis, and it goes really? to your lungs, right? Right. Which you get pro, uh, uh, PE, which is p uh, pulmonary embolism which slows, messes up your heart and throws it in the AFib and, and you die from it. Right. And uh, uh, all of a sudden he wakes up and he's blind in his left eye and come to find out they thought it was a blood clot, but now they're pretty sure it was plaque because he's had some stent operations already, you know, and, well, those and being diagnosed with plaque. And, you know, you got to really watch your diet to, right. because that stuff builds in your arteries. So now he's permanent blind in his left eye. Well, and, and those plaques, they don't just go in your eyes. They go in your brain. It goes in your brain. And, and they go in the right to his brain. Well, they and they do. They right. absolutely right. go to your brain, but it's not so easy to well, measure. Well, the it goes thing about the your eyes is that the, the blood vessels going in there are very, very tiny. So right. it's real easy to rupture those and knock them out. Yeah. And once that happens, you don't get eyesight back. So, so you know, your health is a part of your overall. And, then, and we want you know, we're talking about that. And you think, well, does that have to do with real estate? Well, it has to everything to do with real estate because a lot of the people that get into this, a, a lot of them, we know a lot of people didn't get in real estate until they're in their 40s and 50s. Right. right. So, you know, you got to take care of yourself if you want to hit that goal, you know, having some kind of, you know, uh, massive passive income. Yeah. Yeah. So your health is, is your wealth. Uh, if we're talking about wealth, one of the things that we do, uh, it's not easy to do. There's a, in accounting, there's a thing called a profit and loss. And then there's a thing called a balance sheet. We do both of those. And a profit and loss basically says, 
hey, my net worth, what, the bottom line of the prop, profit and loss is they take your liabilities against your assets and then they look and see uh, what your net worth is. And, and if you take your net worth and let's say you've been an adult 40 years and your net worth is $40,000, well, more or less, you're increasing your net worth $1,000 a year. You know, we had just one rent house last year. If you look at the in the in the Texas market, across the board, the appreciation was twenty percent. So a person that bought something retail dollars a year ago, sitting on it today, if that's if that's a two hundred thousand dollar property and it went up twenty percent, they made that forty thousand dollar improvement in their net worth in one year. And they and they netted money from yeah. it in it, a year. Yeah, typically because interest rates are so low now, there's you're going to make that cash flow every month. So, but they made more money on appreciation. This doesn't happen often, but they made more money on appreciation last year than they did in rents or in in principal and interest. Well, and you learn the zip codes too, where to go where the dep appreciation rate is higher. Yeah, you know? but I mean, uh, this is one of those things where it, a, a blind squirrel would have been successful last year because i said I, the rule was they paid retail just about everywhere went up in value and the, so so this is why we need to have a profit and loss and balance sheet a balance what's these two documents are going to show you am i making a cash flow because you you have to make a cash flow we a lot of times you get hung up on improving your net worth and you don't have money to buy groceries and and then you start making bad decisions so this is a two prong attack and it's really three, right? If you factor in health, but the two prong attacks are how do I build the cash flow where there's real money coming in my pocket where I can buy groceries. And then the second thing is how do I increase my net worth? What do I do to increase my net worth? And, and if, 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 if after 40 years of being an adult and you got $40,000 in a bank, what I did with one house, you took 40 years to do. Mm -hmm. You took 40 years to do. And the thing with the house is I didn't do it. The market did it with the house. And if we do, if we, it gets a little bit more involved, but if, what if I find good deals or what if I learn how to do a creative deal with their seller finance or their sub two, and I've learned how to manage that money. And remember in calm M stands for money. So if I learn how to manage that money, then what I've done is I've learned how to create that wealth and it works for me automatically. Now imagine you had 10 of those houses or 20 of those houses. And, and really uh, we typically buy two houses a month and, and we don't do much in the way of lead generation. Imagine if you really took this business serious, if you, if you could just do one house a month, that's, that's phenomenal. And that's well, a house. five years. You got 60 houses. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and it's, and people do it on a regular basis. Well, they get real committed and real serious and they work on La it. Lawrence, he's a good example of that. I met him about seven or eight years ago at the Rich Club and he comes right. to all of our events and he comes to all right. my workshops. I right. mean, I'm doing a construction workshop for $250 a person. I got a hundred people in the room and he's sitting there and he's been in this business forever. And the one thing I always ask him, I said, Lawrence, tell everybody why you're here. And you right. make all my workshops. He said, because every time I come, I learn something. Yeah. And if I learn something, it's money. Yeah. And if you see these events, you'll see people that have been in this business 15, 20, 30 years, they're showing up. And you think new, newbies are always going, well, why are they showing up for? Hadn't they learned everything? You'll never learn everything. And not only that, you have to stay, you have to feed yourself a steady supply of positive messages. You cannot be around negative people telling you you can't do anything. You got to be around people who are actually doing it. You got to be sitting next to them. They got your shoulders got to be touching theirs, and you got to you got to believe in this outcome, or you won't participate. Well, you what, won't do. What did our mother, mothers and fathers tell us when we were kids? If you hang around with those people, you're going to be just like them. Right? <laughs> but if you hang around with with, with <laughs> She's exactly DAs, right. you hang around DAs, you right. become a DA. But if you hang around with winners, people that are really striving to make their lives better, you're probably going to learn to imitate those people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and be be connected with them. You know, just really quick, I just had a thought. It, it was kind of ironic how the show went today. You know, we we in the middle of the show, we had Marcos on mm -hmm. talking about breakfast tacos. Those are not really the healthiest things to eat. 
and we're telling people come to our event, have a breakfast taco with us, <laughs> and now we're telling people that they need to track their BMI. Well, it, it's, er, it's early in the morning, so you can make your mistake early and then live better the rest of the day. Right. You know, exactly. I, don't know, I just thought that I would bring that up. That was kind of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, the irony. Well, is, you know, you can have a, a vegetarian breakfast taco, and they're actually pretty good. You get some black beans and green peppers and sautéed oh, onions yeah. in there. A little Tabasco sauce yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, maybe some uh, avocados. I mean, those things. And guess what? You, uh, I remember when I first drank a diet coke when it first came out. I thought, who in the world would ever drink this stuff? And after about a month or two of drinking it, your your palate changes. Your taste change. You start hanging out with other people, and all of a sudden, what's important to you changes. You don't. It's so subtle you don't even realize it. And then two years later, you're at the front of the room preaching and saying, "Hey, this is how you do it." And you may it may be so subtle you don't even know why you think like that. Yeah. But you've surrounded yourself with the people that are doing what you want to do. Well, it's just called a good habit. Yeah, the small things in life have the biggest impact. You know. Okay. And it's either, and that can be either way. Uh, so <clears throat> again, all of our information, everything that we've been talking about and that we constantly talk about is on massivepassiveshow.com. Uh, this show is also broadcasted on YouTube and we have a link to our channel. Uh, so again, that's massivepassiveshow.com and you can find all of our information there. And um, by the way, our RIA meetings in San Antonio are always the second Thursday with exceptions occasionally, very yeah. occasionally, like last month. But it's usually second Thursday, and in Houston, it's always the second Saturday. So next month, it'll be November 11th in San Antonio, right. November 13th in Houston. Yeah, so. and I tell you, you, you got to show up at this thing. I mean, you'll meet us, you'll meet a lot of nice people, and you'll go, Do they you know, have to meet you, Pat? Well, they like, they, <laughs> they, like, they like meeting me. I've got so many good friends. I tell you what, every, every one of these people that we knew from years ago, they're showing up, they're coming up to, oh, it's, it's like meeting old friends again. It is. It's like COVID just said, uh, hey, go hide in your hole for a year. Well, and you know, they wanted to be volunteers with us because they, yep. they know the benefit of that. Yep. Well, cool. All right, guys. About 20 seconds. Another wonderful show. Website. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And go to MassivePassiveShow.com.